You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome back to another episode of All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral, with me, Steve Sidwell, and of course, Joe Cole. Uh, Joining us today is a man who made 438 club appearances in a long and distinguished career. Uh, he played a crucial part in getting West Ham back into the Premier League, and was also part of one of the most memorable FA Cup finals in the last 20 years. It is my pleasure to introduce Anton Ferdinand. How you doing, Mum? Yes, geez. Happy New Year. Happy New How are you, mate? All right, all good? Good, thank you. What's happening, city? Good Christmas and New Year? Yeah, really good, thank you. Really good. Family guy now, and I? Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Just enjoying time with the family. Yeah, we... we um, Our boys play against each other. Or over in Essex. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got this. There, there could be another third in there coming. There's, <laughs> about, there's about 100 of them yeah. in the leagues. <laughs> is there a little bit of needle in it already? No, there's no needle. There's no needle. Oh, right, no, okay. no, he's, he's, he's boy's got, um, he's got the, he's got a bit of pace. Nice. Bit of tech techers, yeah. I can see another further now in Grace. You, in the like you want to sign him up already, mate. Listen, all the agents there. He's already got the, he's got the contract ready. <laughs> well, look, you mentioned uh, the family. What is it with the with the Ferdinand family? Because they produce some players. Yeah, well, they produce two, and one's done all right. The other one's done all right. <laughs> People would say, but no, seriously, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know. We, like, obviously, the, with Les and, and Rio. There weren't much comparison. So Les Ferdinand, he's, yeah. he's a cousin? Yeah, he's yeah. my second cousin. Right. Didn't know. The family's that big, we didn't know. And it really? was like, until Rio signed for QPR, and then there was a Ferdinand at QPR, and the first time we actually met was in the toilets at the training ground. Like, walked into the toilet, and man was there, like, oh, it's Les, it's Les. Yeah, yeah. Sir Les. Yeah. And it was like, family, innit? We're family. Yeah. And it really progressed from there. And then Rio had his own career, done his own thing. Um, and then I came after that. But in terms of, of why the Ferdinands, honestly, couldn't tell you. My dad's my dad's into martial art, was into martial art. He went into football. He's got two left feet when it comes to football. Um, I've seen him dancing at Rio, showing me some footage of him dancing <laughs> yeah, he's, at he's, his wedding, yeah. mate. The shapes. Yeah, he's, he's got still move. He can still really, move. Yeah? He's Shirt off on the dance floor. Wow. Yeah. And he's in yeah. shape as well. Yeah, mate. I'm... He's having himself, man. He loves, <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. So obviously generations to come as well. So hopefully the next uh, the next conveyor belt. Obviously, you know Rio's kids yeah. are in football as well. Yours are so it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for them. Um, I'd say I'm probably more protective than Rio. Rio don't. Rio never lived in anyone's shadow, so he don't understand what it feels. He knows it, but he don't yeah. understand what it feels like. Whereas I do. So I think I'm a bit more protective over my son. Yeah. From the age of four, he's my son's eight now. From the age of four, three, four, when we go out to places, say for instance, I'll give you an example, go to go and get a, a, a Turkish takeaway and I walk into the shop and the first thing that one of the waiters says to, to me, boy, who's four years old, you're going to be better than your dad and your uncle. Yeah. He's four years mm -hmm. old, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I understand, I know, I know, but I know what that feels like. Yeah. You know, whereas Rio don't know, Rio's more relaxed about it because he don't yeah. actually understand the feeling. Yeah. yeah, of being in someone's shadow. What, what was that like when you come through West Ham um, with Rio coming through the academy before you? Did it did it help or did it, as you say there, you you kind of said there you was in the shadow, but did it hinder your sort of not your progress because obviously you went on to have a, a, a distinguished career? But what was it like going through after Rio? There was part elements that helped me. Like mm. I didn't think I was going to get a white yes because I was going through a growth spurt in that two year period from of schoolboy yeah, yeah, from yeah. fourteen to sixteen. I was going through a growth, a growth spurt and like, I was like Bambi on ice. You know, when you, you, your mind's telling you to do something but your legs can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Even pinging a ball <clears throat> and that and, and clipping one down the line or, or go to do a skill and I'll fall over. Yeah. You know, um, so I didn't think I was going to get it. But having Rio as my brother helped me because Tony Carr, Peter Braybrook mm. had watched Rio go through this and they yeah, allowed him to come yeah. out the other side. So yeah. they was like, okay, would rather, would rather, it was between me and another boy. Mm -hmm. And they took me instead of the other boy because they're like, okay, we've seen Rio do it. Let's see if Anton, yeah. what Anton's like when he yeah. comes out of the other side. Yeah. But then when I got involved and I started, when I signed the, the, the my YTS and I think it was only four months into my first year, I started training with, yeah. with, with you guys, with the yeah. first team. And you was a massive help. I said this to you before, but yeah. you was a massive help for me. And I think it's just the way that West Ham bring up young players to help the players that are coming through underneath them. When you hear Declan speak about Nobes, yeah. that was like you to me. When I come into training 
And you got to remember, Rio, you, all you guys in in that first team at that time, Paolo, yeah. Freddie, you'd all played with Rio. Yeah, Trevor yeah, yeah, Sinclair, yeah, yeah. you'd all yeah. played with Rio. So when at my first session, I'm like, they're expecting Rio. How, how That's old, how, how I old was you? Mm. How old was you? When seventeen. You, so you were seventeen mm. when you went over. Seventeen, and I was like, they're expecting Rio here. Yeah. Like mm. and wow. Rio's up here. Expectations, yeah. And they like obviously they trained with him every day. They played with him and knew what he was about and knew how good he was. And like, I remember going to that session going, I can't f*** up, man. And you know what it was? Because Rio, sorry, excuse my language, no, because it's... because Rio was someone who was calm, loved the skill, come out yeah. with the ball and stuff like that. In my head, I was thinking, I have to do something like that. I have yeah. to. For Joe... For Cody, for Freddie, for Paolo, kind of for Trevor Sinclair to respect me, I'm gonna to have to do something that yeah. alikens me to Rio. Otherwise, they're gonna be like, "No, you've got to go back," because I always felt being in Rio's shadow. If I didn't do something that alikened me to him, people feel, thought I was rubbish. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. but you was like, you was a great help to me. Like, I remember we done boxes, and you was like, instead of going with the the, the senior players, you come in with us. Yeah. And you was popping. Like, I remember like looking at you and all you was popping in. And I was looking at you Nothing and all changes like, then. <laughs> like it was mad. Like and then I had been in a few times. I was nervous and I was in a few times. And I just remember us walking from the boxes to to a key, into a keep ball. So I was walking from remember over the back yeah. where the grids were, yeah, into yeah. where the seven aside pitch was, where we yeah, had yeah. behind the, the little car park. Yeah. Where we used to do the seven asides. I remember walking from there to there and the whole way over, you was going. I didn't go in, bruv. <laughs> I, didn't go, I didn't go in. I didn't go in. Like, and then you, then uh, the gaffer, Glenn Roder, come walking between me and you. And I just remember you going, gaffer, I was on fire. I didn't, I didn't even go in. I, did, I didn't go in. I didn't go in. <laughs> but you know, it was, it was, the, it, what I took from that was your pride. Yeah. The pride that you took of not going in. Yeah. The middle. And I was like, wow, like, this is, this is what it is. And to be fair, you always spoke to me. You always, yeah. like, whenever it was, Whenever, like, if I was training, you always give me encouragement, yeah. you always, or you would tell me, like, you can do that better, or whatever, yeah. you know? And obviously, Glenn Road was a massive help for me. Like, it helped me that he loved me as a, as a yeah. footballer. I was his type of defender. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, I knew I was going to get a chance. I just knew I had to be ready. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember you coming through. And obviously, because I knew you as, as Rio's younger brother, so we had that relationship anyway. But I, w I would always help the younger yeah. generation. Because I remember, we talked about it before, I remember the, the senior players who really helped me. Yeah. You know, so you always you try and do that. But but Anton, it was, it's interesting you, you think that, like, because I don't think the senior players, we always looked at you like, you're your own guy. No no one is, no one would have gone, oh, we need, you needed to be like, you're 17, you needed to be like Rio, who was like, probably one, still at 12, what, how old was he? How many more years older than you? Is he? He's seven years older. So at that time, he's probably one of the best defenders in the world. So the lads wouldn't have been thinking that. But it's interesting that you was that was your mindset going in there. Yeah. Because, but and this and now with your kids, you don't want them to have that thing where they they've got that. That's that is interesting. But I always remember him being a talented player. And Glenn Road really loved you. Mm -hmm. He was like because he he was like obviously being a centre half. Mm -hmm. He and a, he was a fantastic coach. He was he you was a bit of his project. I thought yeah. he was going to try and. Mold you, yeah, and uh, yeah. So it's interesting. I remember it, and, and and every time you trained, you've done great. Like there was never any couple of lads. You you've seen it, young lads yeah. don't quite got it, but Anton, it, yeah. Anton, you knew he was going to be alright because whenever he trained, he was always capable, and he was getting better and better as the weeks and months got by. Well, look, you went on to make 163 appearances for West Ham, and just hearing you speak there, it sounds like you hold them hold them closest to your heart. I mean, you went yeah. on to play for seven other clubs, but. Sounds yeah. like your, your time at West Ham was obviously your starting block, but the one that you hold most dearly. Yeah, definitely. It's the, the team that I support. Um, I think it's with Millwall. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> swearing at me, you are. Swearing at me. I heard Betty say the other uh, day on yeah. the radio. So that's like, um, but I, I travelled up and down the country watching Rio, Joe, yeah. Lamps, yeah. Michael Carrick. I, I travelled up and down the country watching. So I went from the stand <clears> to the pitch. And yeah. like, you know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to explain that feeling of going from being a supporter to then yeah. going and playing on the pitch and understanding when you put that shirt on, you know first time what it means, what people that are watching you expect from you because you hear it. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you hear yeah, it closely. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and yeah, they are the, the, the club that I hold the highest in regard in terms of every club that I played for solely because I support them and I went from the stands to the pitch. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So you reached the playoffs in 2005. Uh, that season, I remember, because I was in the championship at Reading, you finished sixth, we finished yeah. seventh, and we were just outside the playoffs. Did you think that you was going to get promoted that season? Even though you finished sixth, and you were probably had the strongest squad as well. You just obviously missed out in automatic. You finished sixth. Are you thinking, is this going yeah. to be our yeah. year? Yeah, I did. But our egos got in the way of it. And partly to play was, remember turning up to the... Um, the playoff final win suits and really? stuff like we so all, that was against we Preston, suits. wasn't it? No, nah, the what that one before you talking about the one before two thousand and was that two thousand and five the Preston one? No, nah? no, nah, that was Palace the year before. Oh, I didn't yes. play that game. I'd played, I played left. I'm sorry, I'm going <laughs> the year before we played Palace and got beat by Palace. Yeah. Mm. And I played, right? yes, yeah. I'd played. Um, that was my first year playing in, in the yeah. first team, and I played the last five games at left back. That got us into the playoffs because we weren't in the playoffs. Right. We got we got into the playoffs on the last day. It was a late run, weren't it? Yeah, and I, I scored my first goal was against Watford the last day of the season. Yeah, to get us in. By the way, left foot volley, bottom bins. <laughs> <Decent. laughs> it was decent. YouTube it. <laughs> yeah, the celebration was even better. Yeah. I, I ran the whole length of the pitch to, to celebrate with the fans. Um, but yeah, we got into the playoffs and I played left back the last five games. And then when we got into the playoffs, Paz just bin me. Like put me on the bench, and I was like, what's going on that? And then we got to the final. I didn't even make the bench. Really? The final. And I, Did it he explain hurt me. it to you? No. No? No. Didn't explain nothing to me. Um, and then the following year, obviously, everything I'd learned on that day, I took yeah. into the game, yeah. into the playoff final the following year. All right, gotcha. And, you know, because, you know, it's like as footballers, when, you're not pl- when you've been playing and you're not playing and then you get into the final of something and you... You lose it, and you know you feel you should have been playing, or at least been on the yeah, bench. Yeah. Sometimes you hold that thing of, of like resentment. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's because I weren't on the bench because I, I didn't play, but I didn't have that because I was a West Ham fan. Yeah. I didn't have that. I was hurting. Yeah. yeah Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was I was actually hurting. Yeah. Which was end up being a a, a blessing for me because the next year I took that pain. Yeah. And that of, experience. And yeah. experience. Yes. Yeah. Of how we went about things, like the year after we went in tracksuits, I was like to, to the gaffer, no chance of we wearing a suit. We got mm. in tra- it's a normal game. Yeah, love that. Like we're yeah. not. Why are we going in, in making it bigger than what it is? Yeah, it's big enough as it is already. It's the biggest game yeah. exactly in, financially in world football. Ain't exactly. It? So why are we making it bigger? We're going in tracksuits. Yeah, and let's go and do the job. Yeah. Did Did you feel at that time you was how old would you have been? You I was. Been, you felt like a senior player. Yeah, I was, like nine, that I was nineteen. Yeah. I was, you know, I was outspoken. I was, but I was. Yeah, but you've also been brought up in the football, Anton. So, like, a nineteen-year-old, it's not a normal nineteen-year-old. You, like you said, you've seen it through your brother's eyes. So, at nineteen, you was probably a leader. Yeah, that's amazing. That really. nineteen years old. I mean, look, we all, mm. we're all similar ages. We yeah. all come through. But to say you was, I'm the youngest, of, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to say you was one of the like the leaders at nineteen, yeah. it just goes to show like the wisdom that you had mm. beyond your years. I was confident in my mm. ability. I was very yeah. confident in my ability. Um, I weren't rude. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't rude. I had manners. But if I believed in something, I would say it. And mm. I, w- I was yeah. always like that. Um, especially with football, I was always like that. And I remember even having Teddy Sheringham was in, in the squad. And mm. it's Teddy. And I mean, like, there's a picture of me. I've got it on my Instagram. There's a picture of me at like 12 when I went to for a group of us from Peckham, got taken to... The Tottenham training ground is a picture of me and Teddy. Yeah. And and my mates and we're like 12, 13, and then yeah. years later I'm I'm playing the first team with him. And he's a he's a ledge, but I would challenge him, not in a yeah. rude way, yeah. but if, yeah. if there was something that he was saying I didn't agree with, I said I don't agree with that, Teddy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and I would just like that. Yeah. Well one game that you had to wear suits to was the FA Cup final, <clears throat> which you got to in the same year against the against Liverpool, which is again one of the most memorable cup finals we've had yeah. in, in history. You said there about responsibility. Did you feel like obviously that game went to penalties and you and you missed one? Did you feel like you had to, you had to take the responsibility to take one, or was you yeah. On, yeah? No one wanted the fifth one, and I just so, I went. So did so, you put your hand up, or yeah. was you down to take one? No, I put my hand up. Really, so, Pards was going through the thingy. People mm. said there, okay, I, I, I want one. I want one. 
and I was just chilling, like, thinking I'd rather, like, the other players take one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one wanted, like, when the fifth one come, no one thingied, no one was, like, put themselves forward. So I just thought, oh, okay, I'll take it. Brilliant. You know, and, like... That's, some, that's a brave... That's a brave... Brave, brave call. I mean, we, <clears> we've <throat> all been in penalty shootouts, but it's, it's horrendous, isn't it, to, yeah, to experience yeah. that. I mean, you're, yeah. you're either hand up straight away, I'm, I'm confident, or you're like, you're one If no one wants it, then I'll go. And I'll take yeah. it. I was confident going up to... The, I was confident. It was, I was talking about this yesterday, actually, in, in, the, in the office, talking about it, and... You know, it's like you play in front of 85, 90,000 people for mm. 120 minutes. You're used to... The noise is constant. Yeah. The yeah. singing's constant. Yeah. Especially uh, West Ham, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, Both yeah. sets of fans are unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And I stepped up to the, for the penalty, put the ball down, it was complete silence. And it wow. was like... And it, and it just done me. Yeah. That I was like, wow. Like, and I, <laughs> so you'd rather all the... I would have rather the noise because I was used to... We, yeah, you're, yeah. you're in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And... I think I would have been better if we was shooting down the away end. Yeah. Because yeah. there would have been noise. Yeah. But yeah we were yeah. shooting where the West Ham fans were, so yeah. they were silent. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And I put the ball down and it was just complete and utter silence. Oh. And all I could hear was coming out of the stand was, um, and this is how silent it was. Remember the Nokia? Uh, yeah. The kick. Um, Ringtone. <laughs> that's what I could hear. I was you like, heard a ringtone? I swear that. And I was like, <laughs> that's how quiet it was. And I was like, wow. Huh? <laughs> like, <"Rah." laughs> where, where am I going again? Like, it was it was crazy. No way. It was, it was crazy. That's, that's how amazing. silent it was. Yeah. That's how silent it was when I went to take my penny and it just threw me. I'll wake up through the night now and and, and I'm like, oh, flipping, why did, I, why did I miss it, man? Yeah. You know, but mm. I get my, I get hammered more from players for obviously the shootout. There's no rebound, but the ball come back out, and I flip it, went to hit it, and it went rose. <laughs> <laughs> I went to hit it, and missed it, it twice. Rose in. I missed it twice. <laughs> like, it's, it's, but yeah. it's all, all players. Like, there's always things in your career uh, where you, you know, what I mean, I've, I've. I had a chance in the, I had a chance in the Champions League final. I was going to say that. So 2008 oh. Moscow. I had a chance, and so, I, I still, I'm like you get little shivers yeah. every now and then, like that. Like, Take one, yeah. I miss that. But um, I come off for an Elka in the chair. You, you might have been yeah, there, but I come yeah. off for an Elka, and that was the. Well, I was there. I was in the like, suit, soaking wet. And he was, uh, you know, he was a penalty taker. We had loads of penalty takers. Like it wasn't probably like West Ham. That group of players probably wasn't. There wasn't that many. No. We had no. Lampard, Balak, Ashley Cole, Drop, always took Ashley them. Cole. Phew, Essie, like cap, all captains yeah. of their country. Of course. So I was way down the list when it comes to. I would have took one. So but would you, so would you, so I would have if, taken an Elka. If you had come over and Jose would have gone, right, who wants one? Obviously, a lot of hands would have gone up. Would, you, would yours have gone up? With, how, can, how can you not see it? Like, yeah. You can't let, like, not to, you, you can't, an attacking player, you couldn't let a, a centre half step yeah. up and take a pen yeah. ahead of you. You can't put your hand up like that. It always does be that. I wasn't a penalty taker in my career because no. I played in teams where I never, was, never took them. But, like, in a shootout, you've always got to put your hand up. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that just shows you, like, the fact that as a young man, hands going up, that's. Like the young lads in in the summer, like yeah. Saka and, and yeah. that. do you know what I mean? Yeah, that that takes some balls because yeah. a lot of senior, I've seen a lot of senior players crumble, crumble, yeah, yeah. not not put their hands up. Yeah. Uh, so you get promoted, first season in the Premier League. There's uh, there's rumours of Barcelona. <laughs> um, is what was there truth in that? What was they, they, had, in, they had inquired? <clears throat> apparently, it was on Spanish football. I remember seeing the segment on Spanish football. And I was, that was the struck. That was the struck in the Champions League that day. No, I, 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 I want to go back to this right so, <laughs> yeah. That West Ham, that West Ham dressing room that day, and there would have been Teddy, Bobby Zamora, Cont, R- yeah. Rio Coca, Marlon. Yeah. That was a yeah. good dressing room. You're right. When that come out, one, yeah, what was the strut like from you going back in the dressing room, and what was the banter like from then coming back at you? It was. Um, I don't think it wasn't highlighted massively publicly for people to go right. There's interest. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was just a, a segment on Spanish football. Um, is it what's his name? Guillaume Bagale. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he done a segment saying that uh, Rycard, I think it was Rycard yeah. at the time, was interested in signing me, and then inquired West Ham with West Ham. Um, <laughs> there must have been a shout um, that they got the wrong Ferdinand like it was like yeah, yeah that was coming out yeah <laughs> it, by the way it's not you it's, it's obviously <laughs> Rio come on 100% you know, Bobby Zamora 100% was on me <laughs> I'd have walked straight in and like I'd have been like okay 
<laughs> see? see? <laughs> Search in some slightly thing. <laughs> Would you want calamaris, please? Have the calamaris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd have been giving it all to it was, it was surreal to, to see mm-hmm. that on TV, to see that on a segment. Right, what? Yeah. Me? Like. It was, it was it was surreal, but it also gave me a realization of what I was actually doing mm. at that time in the Premier League, yeah. you know. And and it weren't until after that season I became Anton Rio's brother. Yeah, that season I was still Rio's brother. The first yeah. season, first the season in the Premier League. League. Yeah, I was still Rio's brother. I wasn't Anton by then. I was just oh, that's Rio's brother. That's yeah. Rio's brother. Mm. So when I saw that. Mm. Ryacard, the manager, Ronaldinho's in the team. Yeah. Oil, I was like, I must be doing something right. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? I, I'm mm. slowly becoming my own person because people like Barcelona are interested in me, you know, and, and it was just it was just surreal. Yeah, I had a strut. The confidence <laughs> levels were the confidence levels went <laughs> through the roof. That day in training there was studs on the ball, it weren't side foot no more, it weren't controlled the side, it was studs on. Do you know what I mean? It was one of those. I, I, all of a sudden I wanted to be cultured. Yeah. You know? No, but it was it was surreal and say a lot of people don't know about yeah. that. Um but to be linked with a, not just a team but a manager of that calibre. Yeah. And a, no, a mate, that, team that of that team. That, that, that team, team that's the, is that's the, the best greatest team, team I've ever seen. That's a great, the greatest so, team. Do you think you're going to go in there made a difference in that box? <laughs> <laughs> um, Geesh, come on. No, man. that team was ridiculous. You, you would have been, you would have been all right. I, I think I would have been. It would have suited me. <clears> the way that exactly. I played, it would have suited why, me. That's why the inquiry was there. You know, you look mm. at PK. Yeah, yeah. Struggled in the Premier League, went yeah. there, and he's gone to be one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. That's mad, if, I'm, if I'm being honest, if yeah. I'm being honest and I feel like now I'm retired, I can say, I think like I, I could have been that person yeah, if given yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I never played with people. I never played with players that were better than me. Like I said about partners. Yeah, yeah. I never played with players that were like, that I thought I've got to prove I'm better than them. Yeah, yeah. I knew I was already better than them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that was the biggest difference with me and Rio. I'm not saying I would have gone on to achieve what Rio's achieved, but I think that was the biggest difference yeah. with me and Rio was Rio played with Slavan when he first came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played Valvin Martin, Dixie. They, yeah. He was learning. If I would have went somewhere like that, yeah. I would have thrived. Yeah. I would have, I would have thrived. Well, you've already shown the capability. You said you took from the first player final to the second yeah. player final. So you obviously was a quick learner. Yeah, you're right. It, it, everyone's journey is different and yeah. we can never go back and, and, and start it again. But... You know, if you'd have asked, if Rio could have had a, couldn't have had a better person to teach him than Alvin Martin yeah, and Slavin, yeah. but they're like yeah. top, top center half. Center you know, and he, he, he took something from them, took something from them. He's gone to Leeds. Lucas Radaby took something from him. And his, and, fir- his first year at United, Laurent Blanc. Ah, oh, it's, it's like a you couldn't have picked a better schooling for a young center half. And center mm-hmm. halves don't really don't mature until you get to twenty five. Mm. So there's all yeah. that learning, isn't there? Yeah. Well, down the line, you eventually moved to Sunderland. And you're playing the Roy King. Uh, look, what was he like? What was he like to work I under? I loved him. Yeah. I honestly loved Good him. relationship. Yeah, like you know what I liked about him? He didn't mince his words. Like I grew up in in Peckham where you got told right from wrong. Mm. Yeah. You just, there was no like it's black in and between white, that's it. black and white. Yeah. Listen, this is what it is. You was rubbish. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what you was, you was rubbish today. And he was yeah. like that. Yeah. And I no matter what, you know through your careers, you get bought by certain managers and they are protect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they bought you. Mm, so they don't, yeah. don't want to hammer you in front of the players. He was yeah. like, he was the complete opposite. And I like yeah. that about him. Yeah. Like, my first game at home against Northampton in the Cup and we were getting beat at half-time 1-0. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Like, how much did I pay for you? Really? Is that what like, you said at yeah. half-time? Like, you look a bag of nerves. Really? Like, ham- like hammered me. In front of the boys, like you look a bag of nerves. Look, what, what what is up with you? Like it was me- it was mental, but I I didn't mind it. That's what I'm saying. So your character, you took that. Yeah, like yeah. I wasn't. Joe, I was. I'm not someone who see if for me a manager. If a manager hammers me. In his domain, in his office, yeah. in his dressing room, I wouldn't say a word. Mm. Don't like it's not. Respect levels of that, I wouldn't say a word, but don't embarrass me outside of your domain. Don't chat to me like I'm a little kid mm. outside of your your office yeah. or your 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 dressing room. Yeah. Talk to me like a human being. Yeah. 
you know, and, and managers that I had differences with didn't understand that about me. Yeah. They, they they only looked at me as the player, and not they didn't want to get to know me as the person. Yeah. Who 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 would that have been? Steve and, Bruce. Yeah. Steve, me and Steve Bruce had murders at times. Really? Man. Yeah. Like, and I can't sit here and say he weren't a good manager. He's a good manager. Yeah. yeah. In terms of like tactically, like. I'm not saying he was the best tactically, but there was no grey areas when you went on the pitch. Yeah. This is what you're doing. This is what you've been told to do. And there's no black... It's not... There's, it's black and white. Yeah, yeah. Like, an example, when you're playing fullback and your wing is in front of you, the winger stays with the fullback and the fullback stays with the winger. There's right. no interchange. When you're playing a <clears> big <throat> team, there's no interchange. Yeah, so you know. Yeah. So you know that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. Yeah. If you interchange and the goal comes from that, then you're in for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. like I don't want that. Yeah. So he was very good, like that in terms mm. of setting his teams up. For me, if he didn't buy you, really, or he just had something that he didn't like, it was a problem. You know, and and that's what it was like with me and him. Yeah. You know, he didn't buy me, um, and it just became a, a massive, massive problem where he'd play me. I did, I don't think I played five or six games on the bounce for him. Yeah. He'd play me, and then I'll get taken out. Yeah. Or there'll be there'll be a goal, and my involvement was at the halfway line. Yeah. So you know, there's like five, ten seconds before the ball's gone in the in the box. And in football, it's a long time. Yeah. A yeah. lot happens in that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'd be my fault. Yeah. No one else's. I, I just want to go back to Roy, and you know, you you, you as a player that could take it on the chin and <clears throat> accept the criticism. Did you see anyone? Go under. Was there a few that went under underneath him in terms of couldn't couldn't hack it, or did he cross the line at all? Was any any half time team talks or after a game where you thought Oof. there was there was a team talk at away at Blackburn where he, he took Gibral Cisse to the cleaners, man. Really? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So is this is this is this during, half time? Half time. Half time. Like. Jibro weren't playing well. We'd gone in one nil down, but we were playing well. Like yeah. we were playing well. It was a case of like Kenwin Jones got beat in the air for the goal by Samba, right. and Kenwin Jones had the maddest leap. Yeah, yeah. So he was fuming with it. You meant to have the biggest leap in the club, I mean, yeah. in in the Premier League, and you're getting beat. It's a disgrace. And then he moved on to Jibro, hammered him. Really? Hammered him, like <laughs> mental. Yeah, I can have your arrogance if you're playing well, but you're not. You're not. I can have your. I'll take your arrogance when you're playing well. I'll take it, but you're not. So I don't want to see arrogance from you. And and what was, that, what was it like? Sorry, what was it like after that? <clears throat> what was what was he, what was he say like? Jibro no, 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 just took it. He just took it. He just Jibro So was their relationship fine after? They were fine. Oh, right. um, so then afterwards, Jibro. It's actually on Premier League years. That yeah. game, Jibro scores just after half time. Right. Okay. And Jibro goes up to him and goes, is that all right for you, Gaff? And he starts laughing. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Actually, yeah as right. a giggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he hammered me as well, because I was like, I said, like, um, he said, oh, we're playing rubbish. Duh, 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 duh. And I didn't agree with him. Right. And I was like, I don't agree, boss. I think we've been all right. Yeah. Just when one nil done. You know, I knew yeah. he was going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I knew he was going to say something. And then, all of a sudden... He was like, who's going to grab this game by the scruff of the neck? Who's got the yeah. bollocks to do this and do that? And he looked at me and went, we all know you ain't Anton because you ain't got any bollocks, have you? Like straight faced. <laughs> really? Straight faced, looked at me like that. And I was like, what? It sounds like it's a lot of mind games. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I was like, okay, cool. Like I was fuming inside. Yeah. We went into the tunnel and I turned to the boys and I was like, let's f***ing prove him wrong, man. Yeah. Like let's let's have him. Let's have it. Yeah. Let's make sure we win this game yeah. so we can go back in there and, and give him some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went out on the pitch, Jibro scored just after half time. Then we won the we someone else scored, I think Kenwin scored, and we won the game two one. I think I, I blocked one off the line like the last yeah. five minutes of the game and we won the game. And I was like steaming in to go, What I ain't got no bullet. <laughs> like steaming into the thing. He he was at the door waiting for me. Really? Waiting, actually waiting at the door and he with his hand out, I come in, he put his hand up and he put me and he went, I knew he was going to f*** me anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was it and the giggle, that for me, that for me is top management. Yeah, yeah mind for game. For me. Yeah, mind game. It's interesting now, I wonder if the the managers now, because that's, that's a, I've seen Joe's, I've seen, I've seen managers use that type of yeah. psychology on me and other players around me. 
I just wonder now whether mm. manager will be brave enough. Yeah. To, to, or, or, is, hey, is, is that, getting called nowadays. Yeah, is, is that even a tool that they can use? It's not even something they can use. Like, I don't know. No, you got to be a certain character. Like he's obviously done that to you because he knows you yeah. can take yeah. it and go out there and produce the goods. Whereas, but do you know, what? I took that on. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I took that bit of management to like when I went down the leads when I went and played for Phil Brown at South End. Yeah, I say to Phil, hammer me in front of the lads. Like yeah. half time, if something's going wrong. Yeah. Take it out on me. Yeah. And he's like, but but you're not doing anything wrong. And I say, yeah, but the lads are going to look at it and go, right, if he's hammering Anton, yeah. I better sort myself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, always, I, I, I won't come back at you. I might say something, but hammer, like, let's have it in yeah. there. Yeah. So, so lads understand you're not taking, you, you, you won't take anything other yeah. than than a top level performance. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I, I used to say to him, like, use me. To do yeah. that, and that was based off the fact of what Roy done to me that yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. you we, know, I we, took it on with me. We did the same when I was at Tam. I finished off at Tam for my pal Neil Collins was manager. He'd done exactly the same thing. And anyone who knows Neil, love him, but he's the angriest man in the world, right? He's a Scottish fella, and he's he when he goes, he goes right. So I can, I can, can come for me like in front of the lads, right? He's come for me. I need, I melted. <laughs> I pulled him after. I went, oh, geez, that was a bit strong. <laughs> you, you told me to go for you. <laughs> it's in my face. I'm like, oh, no. It doesn't. Uh. So, yeah, you're right. But I, I, I don't necessarily, I think that side of the game probably gone out of it. Just drifting away. You know what, though? I think our youth team days were different to what they are now. Yeah, yeah the game's different. You involved. know, like Tony Carr, Peter Braybrook. Yeah. A lot of it was mental. Yeah. Mental. A lot of what they done to us, it was a mental test. Yeah. Like, you know, like, Peter Bray, what we used to do all the time. I love talking about Peter. Yeah, I love yeah, it. No. Traffic, traffic. I love it. <laughs> traffic. I love it. But, like, he would... Say, like, we'd had sports sports scientists just yeah. come in yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I was in the youth team. Yeah. And they would map out the run. Mm. Yeah. And we'd do the first run. And he'd look around. And, you know, the first run... Not everyone's like really blowing. No one's, mm. no one's feels like their legs are gone. So people be looking around, this ain't far enough. <laughs> so he'd walk, go and get the pole and move it himself <laughs> and make it longer. And we're looking at it going, what's he doing? <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> I feel comfortable at the moment. Don't do that. Like, I, don't want to, I don't want to be sick in the, in the second or yeah. the third one. But he would always push the boundaries. Mm. Then we'd do yeah. the, the run again. Yeah. And if we were still, and I would say to the lads, listen, everyone come in blowing. Because yeah. that's why he's moving it. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's moving it. You know, and he, he was like, but a lot of it was, so we'll do that in the morning. It'd push us to our limit in the morning. Then in the afternoon, we'd do one-on-ones. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And it would be one-on-ones until you can't move. Yeah, I know. But it was like, it was basically, they were looking at us going, who's going to fold? First, yeah, mm. these these kids don't know what a nah, pre is like, like they? exactly. No. Hay not forest. Oh <laughs> my god, I remember, I, I remember going off with um Frank's dad, it was a he was an unbelievable runner, like he said, run through it, run through this. And uh, Harry used to go there and um, just she say, like, follow Frank and mate, he used to just go off for about an hour in the forest, it's like up and down and like touch like, the touch the thing at the pub, could, yeah, yeah, he touched touch the sign at the pub, hey, and, and if you got lost. Yeah. Like there was a few, there was a few stragglers. Yeah. Like we lost a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they've come out. Hey, like, <laughs> and then Anton's running. And the next, none of that. Like we're gonna have a recovery session. Mm. It was the next. It was one on ones, and and it was it was literally just to see just what, to see who folded first. Yeah. That's what it was. Who's got, who's got the mental strength to keep going? Mm. You know. Okay, you're tired. The ball's out now. You should be buzzing. Yeah. And we're not mm. running you. We yeah. should. You should be buzzing. Mm. I want to see. I want to see excitement. I want to mm. see um, enthusiasm. But. Mm. My legs can't move. It's like kicking a medicine ball, wasn't it? Was, it yeah, it was yeah. mental. Well, look, the youngsters in the Premier League, they're doing well now. Um, look, let's talk Premier League. Yeah. Man City, do you think yeah. they've, do you they've they've tied this up already? They're 10 points clear. Chelsea in second, is it? Is it? Have they won it? I I thought Chelsea were going to win it, if I'm honest. I thought Chelsea, looking at the squad, looking like, especially when they bought Lukaku, what the, dim the first few games, the yeah. different dimension that he gave them, Yeah. you know, along with the players that they've got. I thought Chelsea were going to win it, but that man Pep, man. It's a big gap now, isn't it? 10 it's points. It's, it's, hard, to, it's, hard, to, it's to... hard to... You can't see them losing enough games to, to concede that. It's huge, Sid. It's, uh, 10 points at this stage of the year is still huge. I don't... Even more so in this era, like maybe 15, 20 years ago, yeah. 
you could teams could have more of a wobble. I think yeah. these teams, the three teams, the three great teams, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, I think three genuine. Mm. If any of them were champions, they wouldn't be undeserving of it. They're great. Mm-hmm. I think Chelsea have to win this weekend. They have to win. I was going to say, so Chelsea weekend. play Man City in the early kickoff at the Etihad. Do you see Chelsea getting a result? <clears throat> They have, to, can, huh? they have to. Yep. They can do. It'll be, I think it's going to be interesting to see what the, the, the what type of team he picks. Mm. I think he may go. You know that one where he got, he'll play Lukaku and someone next to him is like a two, and then right. three, and try and pack the midfield. Because yeah. when Man City are in this kind of form, that rhythm, mm. it's it's hard to stop. It's like the Barcelona team we we're talking about earlier, like where they, the, the 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 patterns out the back, and when yeah. they're all on, what like it's, you, you can't get near them. Yeah. It's like. I see so, an image the, the other day where they, they just suffocate you. Everyone's in the yeah. other in in the, the attacking half, mm. and they just suffocate. There's no way out. Yeah, I'm, I remember playing against um, Pep's Barcelona team, and genuinely, at one point, like I used to like when I was tired, I used to go like, when I, used to, I was doing that. I, I was counting. That I thought I swear there's twelve of them. I thought there was twelve. Of them. <laughs> I was counting at the new camp. Was going how many of them is there? And uh, that's what Man City do. Yeah. Like this overloads everywhere. Yeah. Bottom end of the table. What are we thinking there? Is there a few doomed? We've got Norwich, Newcastle, <laughs> Burnley think, I, down there. I don't think anyone's doomed. I think, I mean, there's a lot of, been a lot of talk about Chris Wood yeah. going to Newcastle mm-hmm. and then you know, people laughing, saying they're going to get Mbappe. They was never going to get Mbappe. That's, yeah. that's for two, three years down the yeah. line, them type of players. Yeah. Chris, that's, what a signing that is. Do you think, that, do you think that's what they Good need? Signing. What yeah. a signing. Like, Good signing. He, he, and not only that, you're taking him off of Burnley, who, by the way, yeah, they're, they're amongst well. it. Yeah, well. you know what it is? I think I've been in a few relegation battles, never been relegated, um, always managed to get out of it, mm. always. And when you're in that type of fight, mm. you need to be looking to your left and your right and in front mm. of you and knowing there's people that are going to go into the trenches with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and... and Newcastle don't have that. Yeah. Like when you look at defensively, they don't have that. Where like mm. they're, they're quite soft through the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would Chris would bring that to Newcastle? He's horrible to play against. I played. What against was he, him. What was I going to say? You, you must I, have come I up play, against I him. I played against him when he was at Leeds and I was at Reading. Yeah. He's, he don't give you time on the ball. Yeah. He's a handful. You know, he's a handful. He's like um, a poor man's Kevin Davis. Yeah. 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 Type player. Yeah. We were probably a bit more techers. Yeah. 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 You know, and quicker. Yeah. Even though, like, I think that's 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 I think I'd, that's what I'd put him to. They need the centre half, though. Anthony, they hundred percent need the centre half. At least one. Yeah, but half. everyone's talking about the, the the boy from Lille in in yeah in uh, France. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. you need players who know the league. Yeah, I yeah. Think. If you're gonna stay in uh, in this league, you need mm. players who know the league. Mm. You know, and, and but who do you go and get? Well, that's they've the got problem. they've got a huge game on on Saturday. So Newcastle, they're in a a, a dismal. Uh, run a form five straight defeats as mm. are Watford five that yeah. straight defeats that's a it's, huge game down there where do you see that one swinging Newcastle where is, where is that Newcastle, Newcastle. Newcastle Watford um, I think it's a good it's, it's a good, it's a good it's one a for the punters that one I think you've got to look at um, I think before you make a bet on that game you've got to look at the starting lineups because I think there's a few players on, on both teams that might be still away at our African Nations Cup or just got back or whatever so I fancy Newcastle I do. I just got to think for Newcastle. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna do it. Yeah. I, and, and I think that Eddie Howe. I think that's a. It is Newcastle at home. Yeah, they Newcastle at home. home so I think they'll do it. As well. I think they'll do it. Okay. I think at, at home they'll do. It. I watched uh, Watford the yeah. other day um, in their FA Cup game with Leicester, mm. and they were all a shambles. Yeah. Ranieri, yeah. Ranieri at Watford. What? We, it's just not seemed to have <clears> got going, is it? And we know what Watford are like hiring, firing. Mm. Do you reckon he could possibly? Wait. They could possibly part company if potentially, but I, I'm not a fan of this hire and fire. It's mm. like, but that's Watford's policy, isn't of it? Of course, um, but it's is that the reason why they've been a yo-yo club? Yeah, because they're doing that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's up and down, up and down out of the Premier League, back in the Premier League. You know, is that the reason why? Yeah. You know, and I think it's, you've got a manager who's won the league with a team that shouldn't have won the league. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then. Also, I, I'm not on the inside of that. Like, yeah. is he is he a person? I don't know him. Is he a person who he's achieved that with a yeah. with a team that shouldn't have won it? And he's like, I've done what I'm about to do. Yeah, I mean, he signed he signed me at Chelsea, so yeah. I know I know him, and he's um like he's gone on since that. Then he's 
it, and I, what I don't get with Watford is the short termism, like you know, mm. like just and it, the clubs, the club stinks of that because when you go to a Vicarage Road and watch it, it looks like you're stepping back to the eighties for a team that's been in the Premier League and had Premier League money yeah. for as long as they have. There doesn't seem to be anything much going on around it, which is like infrastructure, like we're going to be here to stay. It's like just fire, fire. And it's worked from to a certain degree, mm. their stadium. But I think this is the year when I think it, it won't. And I think Claudio's the right man because I know he's an, he's an organiser, he's a good man manager. If anyone could do it and keep him up, it'll be him. But I just think the, I, I think the players are not... Just, they haven't got a group of players to do it to anymore. Do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sunday sees the North London derby. Uh, Conti, is he the right man to, to, for the job at Spurs to, to get him going? Oh, Sid, man, we, we've talked about this, haven't we? we, we mm. Um great manager um, again the, 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 when I get when I talk about Spurs it's the Levy factor I think of like and I think to myself we're eight, nine, ten days into the transfer window opening nothing too many noises coming out of there and I'm like well Conte knows that he's group of players he's made some noise though hasn't he he's, he's come yeah. out and said he's been honest he's been honest with, yeah. the, with the Spurs fans if you think we're going to sign five, six, seven players and we're going to finish in the top four Whoever's told you that's lying. It's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah, yeah. We have to understand where he, what he says is something I don't quote him, but it's something along, along the lines of at the moment, we're a mid table team. Mm. That thing is what he's alluding to. Yeah. yeah. And, but I can't see him, the manager that he is, going, and, going in the, at Tottenham without it being written down that he's going to get money yeah. to spend. Mm. I can't yeah. see it. That's the reason, that was apparently the reason yeah. why he didn't sign in the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Anton. Yeah, he's gonna, and, and obviously, you get it written down, wouldn't you? Because yeah. you know Harry Kane didn't get it written down. It was a gentleman's agreement, mm. and that was quickly put to the side. So, what's your thoughts on what's going on with him, like Harry? Yeah, mate, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because he's not, he's not playing to his level, is he? Mm -hmm. There's enough that no. we've had a change. He's had a change of manager. He's just not at his best. I mean, maybe we're being too harsh. Because he is a top, top level striker, you know, he's going to be compared to your Lewandowski's and your Salas and your Ronaldo's and the top players around the world. And he's just not there anymore. Maybe he's just having a six months. You don't know if he's carrying a mark. I don't no. know. No. I don't know. I, I, the way that I, I look, my opinion on it is his body language says mm. there's a problem. Mm. Not like, you know, like, you can be off the boil for six yeah, yeah, months. Yeah. yeah. But his body language is different mm -hmm. to what it has been. Which tells me he's harbouring I think he's harbouring some type of feelings of what yeah. happened. Resentment. Resentment because you know it's like it's embarrassing. He mm. he's actually said bye. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? He actually mm. clapped the fans. The fans wished him well on his way. Yeah. Players have come out on social media and, and wished him well. Yeah. And then yeah. now he's still playing. Yeah. Your pride. As, yeah. a, as a player, it's going to take some battering, isn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing. I get it can be off the boil, mm. like, in terms of form and stuff, mm -hmm. because everyone goes through that in their career at yeah. some point. Yeah. But what's alarming is, is, is his body language. You don't look like he wants to be there. Mm. You know? And it might be his confidence because he might have a knock. And I'm not saying it's definitely yeah. that, but my opinion is the way that his body language is, is more alarming yeah. than the fact that he isn't playing well yeah. because it's hard to come out of that. Yeah, Even yeah. when you move, yeah. it's hard to... You can, when you move, it's a confidence booster. Okay, I'm confident. Yeah. Nah, I've got my move. I'm confident. I'm going to be back on it. Yeah. Torres at Chelsea, wasn't it? When he, yeah. he, His last six months at Liverpool was my first six months there and he wasn't... He, he, he wanted his move, he didn't get it, and it was a similar situation. Mm. And when he went to Chelsea, he, he took that form into Chelsea and it never really... But it was a body language thing yeah. rather than his actual ability. Mm. Yeah. And well, when, he, when he plays well, Tottenham do well. Yes. So, you know, for him to for them to get out of the league, they, they, he'll need to start scoring money. Mm. So, yeah. look, let's give you some coral odds. Um, if you think Chelsea will beat Man City 2-1, Coral will give you odds of 14-1. to And if you think San Maximum will score and Newcastle will beat Watford 1-0... It's odds of twenty five to one. I think oh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a great that. double. That's a good bet. Yeah, I right? like him. That's very good. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, Tottenham v Arsenal is the pick of the Coral Super Series this week. So I'm going to ask you each four simple questions about the North London derby. Quick fire answers, okay? Who's going to win the match? Arsenal. Tottenham v Arsenal. We're at Spurs. Arsenal. Off confident. Can I go draw? 
Yeah. Or the question you... is who will, who will win the match. But if you want to oh. go draw, go draw. No. <laughs> if you think a draw, go I draw. think a draw. I think okay. a draw. <laughs> uh, who will score first? I think That's Arsenal will score one. first, I think. Which player? Harry Kane. I'm going to go Harry Kane. Go on then. Just be speaking I want, about I want, him. I want him. I want him. I want him to be back for England. Okay. Who, who, who's going to score first? I'm going to throw Saka out there. Yeah, love that. I Brilliant. Saka. I love Saka. How many corners in the game? <laughs> you ready for it? 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's a banker. Every week. Every I must week. have hit it once this week. <laughs> <laughs> I hit, I hit we it. get some stats on there. How many corners, Anton? Um, Derby, feisty. Ball's not going to be in control all the time. Mm. 13. Oof, big. Uh, right, Derby. So, how many players will get carded? Yellow or red cards? How many cards in the game? Well, that in Arsenal were the first team to have 100 red cards in Premier League history. Wouldn't There's it? a man with some stats. Yeah, it's a man. Just drop a few stats. <laughs> they say I'm not professional as well. Right, okay. So, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go big. I'm, not, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go six cards. Six. And, okay. And a, and a red in there as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm going four. Four. Love it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, people at home, remember, you can get involved. Just head over to coral.co.uk. Answer the questions correctly to win cash prizes. But as always, please gamble responsibly. Um, right, before we wrap this up, if you're looking for something decent to watch on TV, check out Against the Odds. It's a brand new show from ITV and Coral. Uh, the latest episode is Leicester's Premier League legend, Kasper Schmeichel, tells the story. He's an incredible story. So catch it on ITV Hub now. Um, Anton, thank you for coming on. It's been well, an absolute pleasure. Me, man. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Being what's nice the uh, what's on the script for the next couple of weeks, mate? Are you out and about watching games, or you're still mentoring and yeah. doing bits, aren't you? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to the West Ham game tonight. Um, look forward to that West Ham Norwich. Uh, one of our players at Neuro Global Sports, Max Aaron's, is playing yeah, yeah. for Norwich. I, I met his dad. Well, yeah, lovely okay, fella. Lovely fella. I met lovely him. Fella. When lovely fella. Lovely family. I tell you, I met his dad in a calf after the game. On, on the Fulham Road and they'd just been beaten 7 nil, and he said oh, Max Harrow's dad were chatting and, I, and it just took me but I remember getting beat 7 nil as a young man uh, against Man United and just being on like as low as a snake's belly yeah. and then I, so I said to him listen he actually, he actually did alright in the game believe it or not I said listen just tell him to keep going because he's a top player he by the way have you seen his stats I know he's a player you know he's, he's top across all all of Europe for his age, the most minutes. Yeah. He's wow. played from seven from eighteen to twenty two. Yeah. Or twenty one. Eighteen yeah. to twenty one. He's number one across all of Europe. Yeah. He's like out of all the England centre backs, he's the first to hundred and fifty uh appearances. And that's it, yeah, but that's, that's an unbelievable stuff. No, he was good his dad was a nice fellow and he's a good player. Well you're mentioning him, mate, so mm. Good luck with that. Cheers. Uh, hopefully see you soon on the on the circuit, BT yeah, or something. Definitely. Coley, I'll see you on the next one. Lovely. Uh, remember to find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. You have been listening to the All To Play For podcast brought to you by Joe and Coral. We'll see you on the next one. You've been watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. <laughs>